In this lesson, we will learn how to do half-life problems of radioactive isotopes. Half-life is defined as the time it takes for one half of a radioactive sample to decay. In essence, it measures the rate of radioactive decay. Let's use an analogy of a coin toss to illustrate the half-life of a radioactive isotope. If I toss 20 coins, approximately half of them will turn up heads. In other words, if I toss a coin 20 times, let's say that I get 10 heads. Here I have a graph of number of coins as a function of number of half-lives. At half-life zero, I have 20 coins. After the first coin toss, I have 10 heads and I remove all the tails from the pile. So now at one half-life, I have 10 coins remaining. At one half-life, I have half the number of coins remaining. If I take only the 10 that are heads up and toss them, approximately half of them will turn up heads again. So let's say I now have five heads and I remove the tails coins from the pile. At half-life number two, I now have five coins remaining. If I take only the five that are now heads up and toss them, approximately half of them will turn up heads again. Let's say I get two heads. Therefore, at half-life number three, I now have two coins because I removed the tails from the pile. If I take only the two that are now heads up and toss them, approximately half of them will turn up heads again. Therefore, I now have one head. This is half-life number four. I now have only one coin because I removed the tails from the pile. If I take the last coin and toss it, then there's a 50-50 chance it will be heads. Let's say it comes up tails. So now I have zero heads. Our finished plot would look like this. This is the same thing as plotting the radioactive decay of an isotope. In this graph, we have the remaining mass of strontium-90 plotted against time in years. The half-life of strontium-90 is the time it takes for half of the strontium-90 to decay. So if we start off with 10 grams of strontium-90, the half-life of strontium-90 is when only 5 grams, half as much, remains. That time is 28.8 years. That is the half-life of strontium-90. 28.8 years later, or 57.6 years from the beginning, only half of the 5 grams should remain, so we have 2.5 grams at 57.6 years. And 28.8 years after that, or 86.4 years, only half of the 2.5 grams remain, or 1.25 grams. In algebra, we call this curve exponential. Radioactive decay is an example of exponential decay. It makes sense, then, that to solve half-life problems, we need an exponential equation, and here it is. A equals A naught times 1 half raised to the power of T divided by H. A is the amount of isotope remaining after a given time T. A naught is the original amount of isotope present before it started to decay. T is equal to the time elapsed, and H is the half-life. In other words, the amount of radioactive isotope remaining is equal to the initial amount present times one-half raised to the power of time elapsed divided by half-life. Let's elaborate on this exponent, time elapsed divided by half-life. Time elapsed divided by the amount of time per half-life is equal to the number of half-lives. For example, if the half-life of our strontium-90 isotope is 28.8 years, then if 28.8 years have passed, that's equal to one half-life. Because time elapsed, 28.8 years, divided by the length of one half-life, 28.8 years per half-life, is equal to one half-life. Similarly, let's say that 57.6 years have passed. The time elapsed is 57.6 years. 57.6 years divided by 28.8 years per half-life is equal to two half-lives. Therefore, our equation is really telling us that the amount of isotope remaining at time t is equal to the original amount times one-half raised to the number of half-lives. And to further dissect our equation, the component one-half raised to the number of half-lives is equal to the fraction remaining. One-half raised to the power of zero half-lives which is the same as one half raised to the zero power is equal to one remaining, 
which is 100% remaining. When one half-life has passed, one half raised to the power of one half-life is equal to one half. 50% is remaining after one half-life. And after two half-lives, one half raised to the power of two half-lives tells us that only one-fourth or 0 0.25 remains. We will now learn how to solve half-life problems of radioactive isotope decay using this equation. We can solve for any variable given the values of all the other variables, so we can solve for amount remaining, the half-life, the length of time elapsed, or the original amount present. Let's look at some sample problems. In the first example, we will solve for the amount of sample remaining. The half-life of zinc-71 is 2.4 minutes. If one had 100.0 grams at the beginning, how many grams would be left after 7.2 minutes has elapsed? Our wanted is the number of grams after 7.2 minutes, and we're given a half-life of 2.4 minutes, an original amount of 100.0 grams, and an elapsed time of 7.2 minutes. Our equation is amount remaining is equal to the original amount times one-half raised to the power of total time divided by length of half-life. The original amount is 100.0 grams. We multiply that by one-half raised to the power of t, 7.2 minutes, divided by h, 2.4 minutes per half-life. Therefore, the amount remaining is 12.5 grams. This makes sense when you consider that 7.2 minutes is 2.4 minutes times three, so that three half-lives have elapsed. After one half-life, half of the original 100.0 gram sample remains, or 50 grams. After the second half-life, half of the 50 grams remains, or 25 grams. And after the third half-life, half of the 25 gram sample remains, which is equal to 12.5 grams. Let's solve another half-life problem for amount of sample remaining. Palladium 100 has a half-life of 3.6 days. If one had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms at the start, how many atoms would be present after 23.0 days? We want to find out the amount remaining, and we're given a half-life of 3.6 days, an original amount of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and a total time elapsed of 23.0 days. Notice that in this problem, the amount of sample is given to us in atoms, not grams. But it works the same way. If we put grams into the equation, we'll get grams out. If we put atoms into the equation, we'll get atoms out. Our equation is amount remaining is equal to the original amount times one half raised to the power of total time divided by length of half-life. Our original amount is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and we multiply that by one half raised to the power of the total time elapsed, 23 days, divided by the length of one half-life, 3.6 days. The amount remaining is 7.2 times 10 to the 21 atoms. In this next problem, we'll solve for half-life. If 100.0 grams of carbon-14 decays until only 12.5 grams remains after 17,190 years, what is its half-life? We want to find out the half-life, and we're given the following variables. The original amount is 100.0 grams, the remaining amount is 12.5 grams, and the time elapsed is 17,190 years. We plug these values into our equation. Amount remaining, 12.5 grams, is equal to the original amount, 100.0 grams, times one half raised to the power of the total time elapsed, 17,190 years, divided by the half-life. To solve for half-life, we need to isolate the variable h. Let's first divide each side by 100.0 grams. 12.5 grams divided by 100.0 grams is equal to 1 8 I can see that 1 8 is the same thing as 1 half cubed. So now the equation becomes 1 half cubed is equal to 1 half raised to the power of 17,190 divided by h. Therefore, the exponents are equal to each other. 3 is equal to 17,190 years divided by h. We multiply each side of the equation by h to get it out of the denominator, and our equation becomes 3h is equal to 17,190 years. To solve for h, we divide each side by 3, and we get a half-life of 5,730 years. 
If we hadn't seen the relationship between one eighth and one half cubed, we would have needed to use logarithms to solve this problem. I will show how to do that in the next problem. How many years will it take for 84.0 grams of tritium to decay to a 23.5 gram sample? The half-life of tritium is 12.3 years. We want to find out the total time elapsed and we're given an original amount of 84.0 grams, a final amount of 23.5 grams, and a half-life of 12.3 years. Let's plug these values into our half-life equation. Amount remaining at time t, 23.5 grams, is equal to the initial amount, 84.0 grams, times 1 half raised to the power of the total time elapsed, which is our unknown t, divided by the length of half-life, 12.3 years. To solve for t, we need to isolate the variable, so we'll start by dividing each side by 84.0 grams. 23.5 grams divided by 84.0 grams is equal to 0 0.280. Now to solve for an unknown in an exponent, we'll take the base 10 logarithm of each side. When we take the logarithm of a number raised to an exponent, the exponent ends up in front of the logarithm. In other words, the logarithm of 1 half raised to the power of t divided by 12.3 years is the same thing as t divided by 12.3 years times the logarithm of 1 half or 0.5. Since what we do to one side of the equation we have to do to the other, our equation becomes the log of 0 0.280 is equal to t divided by 12.3 years times the log of 0 0.5. The log of 0 0.280 is equal to negative 0 0.553, and the log of 0 0.5 is equal to negative 0 0.301, so our equation becomes negative 0 0.553 is equal to t divided by 12.3 times negative 0 0.301. Dividing each side by negative 0.301, we get 1.84 is equal to t divided by 12.3 years. To solve for t, we multiply each side by 12.3 years and we get a total time elapsed as 22.6 years.